Hey everybody, so welcome to my stream tonight. Um, tonight is pretty cool and special because we're doing an in-depth kind of programming thing here uh, from my streaming studio. I've been starting to program the sounds for the tour and uh, the first song that I was working on was The Alien, which you've all heard. It has a lot of sounds in it, a lot of cool stuff, and I'm using my Kronos to make it happen. So the whole idea here is that I've got a camera that's on the screen and I've got all my patches here and we're going to look at it. We're going to see how all this comes together and what makes my kind of like synthesizer programming dream theater world tick. So without further ado, let's hear some snarling pig and listen to it. Okay, so that is the world famous snarling pig that we all know and love so much that's used in so many Dream Theater songs. And um, 
What I want to uh, show you is how the snarling pig is made. It's actually two programs um, that are linked together and they're panned a little bit. If we hear one of them. So one of them doesn't really do the trick because it's not fat enough, right? So I have two and I pan them. One's a little bit left, one's a little bit right. Here's the one that's on the right. So the whole thing, the whole thing with the pig is it's kind of a boring sound if you take off the effects. I often think of synthesizers as, you know, with effects as comp like, it's not separate in my mind. The effects are part of the synthesizer because check it out, check it out. If I turn off the effects right now on this snarling pig, it sounds really like, like nothing. It's buzzy and light and it doesn't really have much depth to it at all. Right? So what really makes the pig is all the effects. The sound itself is just like a simple saw wave going through this kind of phasey thing, which is pretty straight ahead. But I put it through a wave shaper, a graphic EQ, a sub oscillator, uh, and each, each pig is actually put through its own set of separate wave shaper um, and all the different uh, effects. And some of these effects are very, very particular. Like if we just listen to this one, we see that it's routed to effects number one. See, the Kronos is very cool. It's got 12 insert effects. So this is routed to number one, which is my wave shaper. So if we look at the wave shaper and we go into press in here, then we can see what's going on with the wave shaper. If I take it off, it's dry. If I turn the wave shaper on, the wave shaper has a lot of modes. And this mode that this one is in right now is called zigzag. And it, <clears throat> you really have to use your ear to hear what's gonna be best because there's so many choices and a lot of them don't really sound very attractive. What I mean by that is let's just listen to a couple. They're all, they're all gonna be really different. So the pig, some are really quiet, some are really mellow. So the programming thing takes a lot of time because it's kind of hard to just say, oh, I'm gonna use this particular one. But when you find the one, it really, really works very beautifully. So let's, if I hit this button, I'll see the chain of effects. So again, now we have the graphic EQ and I'm routing one effect into another. I use these effects a lot. Like this wave shaper is going right into the EQ I press that and we open that up. We can see what's going on. This is a very wide equalizer and I can tune in frequencies um, from uh, 80 hertz to, what does it say? Like 15K, I think. So let's dump the low frequencies first. You can hear the, the difference, right? But it's gonna be the ones in the middle that really make the difference. The power of an equalizer is massive. When I'm mixing layers together, it really, it's all about that. To get the magic and have each frequency really, like that's much too dull, right? So I'm adding 200, which is an important frequency there. And sometimes I'll use a, um, a parametric EQ so I can narrow the band a little bit also and get very specific, which is really pretty cool. And then there's a sub oscillator so I can get a little bit of extra lows into the sound as well. We look at that, if I can take it off. There you go, you can hear what it does to it. It's really, it does this nice little but subtle kind of thing. So if I come out and we listen to the sound again, you can kind of get the feel for how it was made and how I fine-tuned it.
So, if you're just joining us, I should tell you all that this is going to be a whole session looking very deeply into the way I work with my synthesizer, the Kronos, looking at the sounds um, that are in the song The Alien. And um, it's going to be a Patreon event of which I invited all of you on YouTube and Facebook to join me for the first 10 minutes or so. But uh, I'm going to close it down because that's why I have a Patreon, so allowing fans to give back. Um, which I think is a wonderful concept for musicians. So I invite you all to check out my inner circle. Come join me for this cool session. We're going to have some fun. I'm going to answer all kinds of questions. Um, and uh, I look forward to that. I should say before I leave you all that I'm also heading to the West Coast very soon because um, I have some shows out there in California and Phoenix. And they start on Monday night in San Francisco at Yoshi's uh, and go on from there, mostly California, with the last show uh, in Phoenix. I also want to say that um, you all should kind of keep your eyes open because any day we're going to be talking a lot about NFTs because I'm preparing a very, very special uh, first launch of my NFTs with an amazing artist called VJ Fader. We've got some great stuff. It's a whole nother world. Really, really excited about it. So stay tuned for that. And do come and check out my Patreon. Would love to have you as a uh, a patron there, and uh, I will see all of you hopefully very soon on the road. And now we're going to switch to to Patreon. Thank you. <laughs>